All right, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> good morning and welcome. Hello, hello, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. How's everyone today? Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. I was not here yesterday. It was my day off, and uh, it was a fun day. It was a fun day out and about with my wife. Got a lot done. Um, Both good and bad. You know, had fun out during the course of the day doing, you know, doing stuff. But then uh, at night, stuck at home working on tax stuff, which sucked ass, but it had to be done. There's some stuff I needed my, my wife <coughs> to uh, be involved with, sign off on and everything. And in order to do that, she, you know, she had to be around, which is why we had to do it on our day off here. Um, <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of February, 2021. I'm DSP, of course, and I welcome you to the first of two gameplay streams for the day. Should be a fun day. We got a good uh, balance of stuff today. A more chill stream earlier on here. And then obviously a very not chill stream later on tonight with Call of Duty. So a good variety of stuff on the stream to, for sure today. Uh, I'm excited because we're actually heading into a new area in Immortals Phoenix Rising. It's actually the fourth major area of the game out of the five in the game. Um, so that's a good thing. To be heading into a new area and seeing exactly what's going to be in there. I don't know what to expect. It's supposed to be the Grove of Athena. So it's, when you say the Grove, it sounds like there should be lush, uh, you know, flora. Which there has not been in the last two areas. Both the Ares area and the Forge Lands. Both were more like arid areas with like like either cliffs or desert type of environment. So it should be cool to see what's in this next area. Hopefully it's something... Very different, right? Um, so I hope you guys will, will ch be ready to chill with me here today. Uh, good stuff on the stream. Relaxing. Lots of opportunity for interaction, for sure, on an immortal stream, since it's mostly open-world exploration. I'm sure people will have a lot of topics to talk about. In fact, <laughs> apparently a lot of stuff happened, uh, like, news-wise yesterday, and I've been trying to, like, sift through it all, and there's just, like, so much that happened that I can't even, like, put my finger on what to talk about on stream today. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to get through our usual earlier segments here on the stream, and then when we get to the point where I talk about news, I'm just going to ask you guys, what do you want to talk about? Because I saw game updates, I saw uh, movie updates, I saw all kinds of stuff, and uh, I don't even know, I really don't even know where to start. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. So today, as I've already said, it's going to be Immortals Phoenix Rising right now, and then it's going to be Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on the late stream, a two-hour late-night first-person shooter multiplayer session. <clears throat> I actually really enjoyed the new map the other day, which was called um, Express. It's the, the map that's the train station. So, looking forward to more of that tonight. Hope you guys will join me for that tonight. Um, tomorrow, another major stream of Assassin's Creed. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. We're heading into Winchester now, which apparently is the next to last area in the game before we unlock major story developments. So, we're pushing forward. Hopefully, maybe we can even get through that tomorrow, the whole area. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night, it'll be my weekly chill stream of Yakuza 7. Now... Admittedly, gameplay-wise, not riveting at all. All I'm going to be doing is grinding in an underground sewer dungeon, trying to get my characters to level 99. However, while I do that, a lot of fun interactions. And last week, we actually had some really fun conversation about old-school sitcoms and television shows, and even had a sing-along segment where I was singing theme songs to popular shows and stuff. And actually, people said, wow, that was actually one of the coolest chill streams I've done in a long time. It was a throwback to, say, my old Minecraft streams, or even when I used to play MLB The Show. <laughs> Okay, so, more of that tomorrow night. Now, Friday, ladies and gentlemen, is the day that is uncertain this week, all right? Let me remind everyone what's going on, get everyone up to speed here so you know what's happening. On Friday, it's the release of Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. I would very much like to play that game on release day. It's a game that I've only played once before with John Rambo back in the day as a co-op playthrough. Quite frankly, I don't remember it. Like, I don't remember the gameplay of it at all. I know that people reviewed it really well, so it was a really great platformer. I know there's a new cat power-up in the game, but I don't remember it. <laughs> so I would definitely love to replay it. Um, absolutely. And 
Also, you know, this new Bowser's Fury mode that was added, people are saying it kind of feels like an expansion to Super Mario Odyssey that maybe just never made it into the game. Maybe it wasn't finished or whatever. So it certainly seems like it'll be pretty neat. And I definitely want to play it. It's pre pretty much the major release of the month. There's really nothing else going on with new releases this month that's worth mentioning. Um, but <clears throat> right now, I am not in a good situation financially. I've explained this to you guys earlier in the week. I'll explain it very briefly again. Uh, due to a bunch of bills and things that came due in January, some of which were unexpectedly high, which I didn't think they were going to be that high, and they were. Uh, I am completely strapped for cash. I basically had to empty out my bank account. And the only money that I've had to spend on anything in the last week and a half at this point has been your tips. You guys tipping me during the streams has paid for everything, including food, groceries to make make meals at home, or you know the one day a week that I eat out with my wife. Um, bills, all the bills that have come due this month so far, including my car bill, uh, two different condo association fees, even though I definitely should not be having to pay one, but I legally apparently I'm still bound to doing it, which is a pain in my fucking ass. Um, coming up in the next two days, internet bills due. Very high for my internet. I have business class internet. So this is just a few of the things. I'm not going to go through everything, but all those bills have been paid via your tips because you guys have helped me out during the streams with your contributions, okay? Now, the good news is, the light at the end of the tunnel here is very short, very close by. <clears throat> Once I get paid by Twitch this month, I'll be in the clear. I'll be fine for the rest of the month. That shouldn't be an issue. But I need to get there, and Twitch usually doesn't pay you until the 15th of the month. So I have five more days to go, and I know for a fact that within the next two days, I have two major things that need to clear, and I need your help with tips to afford them, okay? So if I can raise the tips goals on both of today's streams, today this stream and tonight's stream, and tomorrow, same thing. If on the early stream and the late stream, if we can hit these four tips goals, then I've done the calculations, and I will be in the clear... I'll be able to afford those bills, and I'll be able to get Super Mario 3D World, okay? But if I don't, if we have slow streams where tips are very low, I, I, can't, I can't do it. Every dollar that I have has to go towards these bills, and quite frankly, if I can't pay the bills, that's going to put me in a really bad situation for this month. It's going to likely overdraft my account, which I haven't had happen in about a year, um, which would be awful. Uh, it's going to put me so that now when I get paid, now I have to pay back fees and everything and then backfill bills. What I'm hoping is it doesn't happen with the internet and then they say, oh, well, because you didn't pay now, we're going to turn off your internet. But that's very unlikely. Usually the only way they would do that is if you didn't pay for an extended period of time. So I'm really not afraid of that happening. But you see the point I'm making. The essentials come before me being able to spend more money on, on more games. And the thing is, if we hit the tips goals, great. I'll pay all these bills this week, no problem. And then on Friday, I'll, I'll buy Mario and we'll play it. It'll be a great weekend, okay? But if not, then we just won't play Mario for now. I'll ha it'll have to wait. And what I'll do is on Friday, instead, I'll play Maneater because I've already downloaded it as a free for PS Plus game and we'll just mess around with Maneater on Friday as, as a stream, okay? <laughs> so that's what's going on right now. <clears throat> and I want to say thank you guys so much. Monday, you guys were very supportive. Uh, in particular, those who came out and tipped me on Monday to help me out when they heard of the issue. I really appreciate that. It helped a ton. It did. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> and uh, let's hope we can keep it up. Let's hope today with Immortals and Call of Duty and then tomorrow with uh, Assassin's Creed and Yakuza 7 that people will support those streams and I can get through this tough time. And once I do, then we're good. Like I said. No, you know, no problem. Once I get paid by Twitch, then we should be good for the rest of the month. I don't foresee any other issues, okay? The weird thing that, that's hilarious to me is these dumbass haters took what I said on one day and said, oh, this is all because of Phil's taxes. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, when did I ever say my issue is taxes? It's not at all. It couldn't be further from the truth. I just need to pay the stuff for the next week. Um... Yeah, I just need to pay this stuff for the next week. I don't even know what you're talking about. Taxes. Like, this has nothing, nothing to do with taxes. Why would they even say that? Like, again, what it is is, last few years, I've had a lot of issues financially with taxes and everything behind the scenes. There's actually been a few times when taxes hit me unexpectedly over the last few years, and I had to do, like, tax fundraiser streams and things like that 
So to them, again, the one-track mind, black and white, it, you know, they see the world as black and white. They're complete idiots. They think if anything's going wrong, it must be taxes. It's, couldn't No, not at all, actually. In fact, this year coming up should be a much better year for me tax-wise. You know, the last couple of years, either I paid nothing at all in taxes or I paid very little, and then those taxes ended up going on a back tax plan that I've now been paying uh, on a monthly basis. <clears throat> well, this last year, I actually did actually start regularly paying taxes again for the first time in many years that I could afford it. So I likely I'll still owe. I mean, I can't imagine that I don't still owe money to the government. That'd be pretty ridiculous, knowing the way the taxes work for the self-employed. But it's certainly not going to be some exorbitantly large amount like I've owed in the past and maybe I'll be able to afford it maybe I won't if I can't afford it <clears throat> I'm sure whatever I can't afford they'll wrap into the back tax plan it's actually not that big of a deal anymore so I don't even know what they're talking about like they just make shit up I had someone come into the stream chat today I, on, on Twitter they're coming in and insulting me about taxes like what the fuck are you talking about when did I ever even say that never they just make shit up that's how they are they just completely fabricate shit <clears throat> very, very confusing how dumb these idiots are, but anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I don't really care about that shit. It's just stupidity. So anyway, guys, please, if you can today, please tip me. Tomorrow, if you can, please tip me. I need to get through, t you know, these two days, hit the tips goals, and if we do, then I should be able to afford everything this week, and we should be good. If not, then I can't afford the stuff this week, and I won't be good, quite frankly. It'll, it'll set me back. Which would really suck. And obviously that's not what we want to happen. I want to be able to be ahead of the game paying everything I owe and play Mario on Friday, right? So thank you again for that. Alright. Um, let's see here. So that's the schedule now. Of course, the rest of the weekend depends on what happens. If I get Mario on Friday, I'll probably play it again on Saturday. I would probably play it like two back-to-back -back days. And then likely Sunday it would be Call of Duty on the mainstream. And then on Monday, it would be Assassin's Creed on the mainstream. <clears throat> As for the night streams, Friday is going to be Street Fighter. Okay. Saturday will likely be something like Immortals Phoenix Rising. Um, Sunday, quite frankly, I'm not sure. But if I play Mario Friday and Saturday, maybe I'll do it as a late night stream on Sunday. And then on Monday, it's going to be Assassin's Creed. And yes, I will do another stream of Fall Guys because I did this on Monday night. And you guys really seemed to enjoy it. When I played it, it was something different. It was something refreshing. You know what it is, because I haven't played it in so long. And actually just sitting down and experiencing the new maps, the remixed maps and stuff like that, it was pretty fun. So I'll probably do another session of Fall Guys on Monday night coming up. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> this is not a lock for something that I'm going to definitely be doing uh, indefinitely. This is something that, you know, if you guys like it on a weekly basis, maybe I'll keep playing it once a week. But if it gets boring, we don't have to keep doing it anymore. All right? Figure just something good for variety's sake. And then remember, guys, once I finally do finish Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that's when we're starting Divinity Original Sin 2. I'm waiting to finish the goddamn game, and I'm trying my damnedest. Every time I play it, it seems like I'm getting through a major area now. Like I said, here's hoping tomorrow I can get through another whole area in one sitting. And then maybe the next time I get through the next area, then we can finally get into the endgame story. I fucking hope. <laughs> I know, I can't believe that the game is this long. I don't think anyone can. Um, also, coming up, Viewer's Choice event. There will be the opportunity for you guys to nominate and vote on another game that will be a full playthrough here on the streams. Now that the retrospective is over, now I can focus in on that a little bit more. So what I'm expecting is over this coming week, weekend probably, I will set up a, a ability for you guys to no start nominating games for the upcoming Viewer's Choice event. And basically... The only criteria are as follows, all right? Number one, no, I'm not playing Street Fighter V. I'm not playing Code Vein. I'm not picking any of these games that, number one, wouldn't even turn into good playthroughs, and number two, you guys have hounded me for because you're trolling over the last couple of years. That shit's just not happening, okay? <clears throat> and number two, no, we're not doing another lengthy, lengthy RPG. It's just not happening. The last few Viewer's Choice events, you guys keep nominating 80-plus hour games that take me five months to beat. And I'm just not doing that anymore. All right? I'm ruling that out. This is not happening for this viewer's choice. So just get that out of your mind. All right? But outside of that, <clears throat> there certainly are a ridiculous amount of games that you guys can nominate that would be interesting playthroughs. And so I would say, you know, get ready. Get some ideas in your heads for what it is that you would like to nominate coming up. 
All right. All right, so before we, we move on, I want to talk a little bit about my day off because uh, people always ask me about stuff about my day off. So for the first time in, let's see, three months, over three months, since our state locked down yet again, I think it was either October or November, I can't even remember, but our state had locked down for COVID regulations again because our COVID numbers went up. And so all the businesses were closed except for retail and essential businesses. Finally, over the last week, everything opened up again. My wife and I were able to go to one of our favorite little kind of like a it's, a, it's like a brunch nook. And what I mean by that is a very small business, very small restaurant that only does breakfast and lunch. And we were actually really enjoying this place for a while before COVID. And then it got closed down for COVID. And we were ordering from it for a while <clears throat> for delivery. But let's be honest here. When you order stuff for delivery versus when you have it fresh, it's not as good. And quite frankly, it also sucked because I know during the COVID, uh, you know, outbreak, these guys were probably suffering huge and they didn't have half the stuff on the menu. You'd order it and be like, oh, we don't have it. Or at one point they had like these really good French fries that were seasoned. All of a sudden they went to like generic frozen plain French fries. And it's because during the pandemic, what do you do? You got to cut corners, right? So we were very happy to finally be able to go there again for the first time in months and sit down and have a, a brunch together. And my wife got a, a omelet, and I got a club sandwich. Actually, was going to get a pastrami sandwich, but they said, we don't even have corned beef right now because of the pandemic. You know, we have to cut corners, and basically not a lot of people get the corned beef, so we can't even make you a pastrami sandwich. I was like, all right, I'll take the club sandwich. It was very good. We were very happy. And the thing is, it's a local business. We wanted to support local business, not a giant chain that was going to be fucking fine during the pandemic. We wanted to actually go out and say, first opportunity to go somewhere and support something that has been hurting seriously in the last year, and that's exactly what we did. Do they know us by name? No, they don't, but they recognize us. Because, like I said, we used to go there all the time, and then we stopped going there because we couldn't go there anymore. So they actually know us. And by the way, we were we felt awful. We went in there. It was empty. The entire place was empty. They had a couple to-go orders, but they were, like, dead. And I was like, this sucks. This place used to be happening. This place used to have people in here all the time. The food was highly rated online. Like, everything was good. And now this place is dead to a crawl because of fucking COVID. And I, you gotta wonder, when you go into a place like that, are they even gonna be able to, to stay open? How long can they operate on limited to no income? bleeding money before they're going to end up going out of business and it sucks because they're so good like i tell you i order a club sandwich this thing is huge this thing is like enough for two meals and they couldn't finish it it was too much you know same thing with my wife's omelet it's like giant omelet everything fresh made you know amazingly good they actually have this really good homemade potato salad that they make and i always when we go there i don't get fries and i get the potato salad like oh my god it's so good and likely they're just i, I mean i feel terrible I feel like they're going to... I really am afraid they're going to go out of business for no fucking good reason. So it sucks. All right? It does. It sucks. But anyway, felt good about supporting a local business, having something that we hadn't had in a long time. It was nice. And, you know, we went out. We did a lot of stuff. I uh, had to get some stuff for Jasper. And while we were getting him his essentials, they had these new thing that at the, at the pet store. I think it was called, like, Protein Puffs. So we're looking at it, and it looks like, it actually looks like small cocoa puffs for your cat. But it's not cocoa, it's salmon flavor, right? So we bring these home thinking, ah, oh, it's another treat, he's finicky, he might not like it. He fucking loves these things. You put it, you put one down, he sniffs it, he immediately puts it in his mouth, chomp, chomp, like eating a cocoa puff. And then he chases you around the house. If you have the bag of the treats, he chases you around the house because he likes it so much. He's like, can I have another one? Can I have another one? <laughs> and he's never like that. He's never like that at all. So it's like, this must really be something that he, he enjoys. It must taste great to him, you know? Uh, We've got to be careful, of course. You can't give a cat treats constantly. So maybe give him a couple. If he, What we'll do, if he has something good or if he behaves, then we'll give it to him as a reward. Because that's the way you do it with, with cats. With cats, you can't do negative reinforcement. You need to do positive reinforcement. So if a cat is doing something good, <clears throat> is behaving, is doing something, you know what I mean? Doing something good, nice, 
and cute or whatever and you want to reinforce that behavior then you give them a treat but you can't really punish a cat when it's doing something bad it's been proven that they don't really learn that way so we'll see you know hopefully this will be a good way to reward him when he's doing good stuff <clears throat> so jasper munching on the cocoa puffs oh, there's salmon puffs munching on salmon puffs um just trying to think if there's anything else in no no probably not nothing really major or anything that happened yesterday like i said we spent the first half of the day out doing our essentials grocery shopping and doing all that stuff and then we came home and the second half of the day what i had to do is i had to sit down and print out a bunch of forms for my tax guy that cat and i have to sign off on because they're going to prepare our taxes for the year and we have to sign off on all this shit <clears throat> in order for them to do it and i had to upload a bunch of, of uh, information and shit it's like uh, <clears throat> pretty annoying uh i didn't want to have to do that on my day off but it was the only time when cat and i were kind of around together and not strapped for time where i could do all that stuff so i'm still not done with my tax prep as you guys know i've been talking about it for like a week and a half i'm still not done i still have more data i have to get together what i did is i took all the data that i've been working on for the past week and a half and i uploaded it for the these tax people to review and i took said right in there it's not done i'm still working on it uh so over the course of this next week much like last week between the stream you know before the stream right after the stream i'm gonna be sitting down here crunching numbers and plugging them into spreadsheets and trying to finish that up i still have several different things i have to do i was looking at it this morning i was like oh god i got this i got this i got this i still gotta do so getting there but not yet just a necessary part when you own your own business your taxes are incredibly complicated and i love it when i say something like man i hate doing my taxes on my day off and people are like, everyone has to do that. Like, oh, everyone has to sit here for about 10 hours going through all these transactions, plugging them into a spreadsheet, doing calculation after calculation, making sure you have every single penny of income accounted for because if you don't, that's when the government comes after you. See, a lot of people, they, they think of taxes the wrong way. There's two major times when the United States government will come after you for taxes, all right? The first is if you just don't file your taxes at all. If you lie and you say, oh, I don't have any business this year, I didn't make any money, or if you just don't file at all, that's the worst thing you can do because then they're going to definitely catch up with you. But the other thing you can do is if you try to hide income. That's the worst thing you can do. If you try to hide income, the government will definitely find out about it. All right? So i make sure that every penny that i make is accounted for and, and 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 you know on my taxes as as complicated as annoying as it can fucking be i even go the extra mile i'll give you guys an example here all right i don't know what twitch tv does with their tax filings and what they report to the irs or what they don't i have no idea all i know is that every year twitch will send me a document that they claim is an essential tax document and it says something like Here's the royalties you made as being a streamer on Twitch this year. And that document is incredibly wrong. It's always way under what I actually made on Twitch. Like, no lie, they sent me a document this year saying, here's what you made. That document was, like, less than half of what I actually made on Twitch in 2020. And I'm looking at it like, I don't know how possibly they could think this document is correct. I'm looking at like, what does this even mean? I don't know what it's supposed to be. Because they claim it's like, um, how can I say this? They claim it's like uh, royalties or something. Now, what do you consider royalties? Could that be, maybe that's just, maybe that's just revenue based on subscriptions. Maybe that's what it is. And they break it out like that. But that doesn't, that doesn't reflect everything you actually make on Twitch. It's wrong. It's way wrong. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's say, for example, I, I said, oh, well, this is what Twitch sent me. This is what they claim I made. So if I just send that to the government and I say, oh, yeah, I only made that, that's bad. All right, because the government's going to find out eventually, you know, that something doesn't isn't right. And they're eventually they're going to try to figure all this out. And they're going to say, what are you talking about here? Like, you know, why is it? That it looks like you made this much and you only said you made this much and you gotta you know when it comes to this you gotta have your eyes dotted your t's crossed you know luckily i have 
receipts for everything, whether digital or not. I have receipts for everything that that happens, and I have, you know, pay, you know, pay stubs to show. Oh, here's or here's or actually, what I should say, I have transaction history. I can show every single payment that I receive from every company that pays me. I have all this at hand, and I always this is the time of year. This is what takes me so long. I have to go through all of that to make sure every payment is accounted for and everything is you know is registered because. That's the thing. If you if you guys you guys may not remember this, all right. A couple years ago, I was on a podcast with this guy, the quartering, which you know, admittedly at that point I didn't know much about him. I still don't know much about him now. I don't follow him except for that he wanted me on his podcast. And <clears throat> during my interview with him, he had mentioned to me that he had gotten audited by the IRS, and the reason was because he had gone to a casino. He had w- apparently won, like, a good amount of money at the casino. Like, apparently he won, like, a, a small jackpot at the casino. And he didn't report it. Like, he's like, oh, I totally forgot about it. And I, he didn't report it to the government. And so the government had record from the casino that he had won the money, but he didn't claim it on his taxes. So that's a giant red flag. Why is it that we have notice that you received a ton of money from somewhere and you didn't you didn't say anything about it. <clears throat> and when that happens, that is when you're going to get slammed and the government's going to come to you and be like, well, if you forgot that, what else did you forget? We want to audit you, right? That's not good. <laughs> and I know that, you know, I know. I work with tax professionals. I know all about, you know, what what's going to happen if I don't do stuff right. And I that's why I, if anything... I probably over-report. Seriously, like, I probably end up over-reporting either my income or, you know what I mean, or saying I owe more taxes than I really do because I make sure that every dollar that comes in is accounted for. You got to be careful with this stuff, you know? Uh, And that's what takes me so long to do my taxes. I have to look for every dollar of revenue, no matter where it came from, whether it was, you know, various income sources from Twitch, whether it was you guys tipping me, whether it was YouTube ad revenue, whether it was a few you know people bought stuff off my Teespring store, um, and or any other various income that could come in during the course of a year, um, all has to be accounted for. You got to be very careful with what you do. I I would go as far to say I almost guarantee that the vast majority of people out there who do f- content creation like I do. Except for maybe the absolute biggest people who probably pay exorbitant amounts of money to legal teams to do it right. Probably most people who are doing streaming and YouTube content creation are not paying their taxes correctly. Because there's so many ways you can try to get around it that is not good. I I do none of them. I do not try to get around anything. Everything that I make is reported as income and I pay taxes on all of it. But I could just imagine people saying, oh, you know. I stream and I only made a you know thousand dollars on streaming this year. That must not be enough to pay taxes on. Nope, wrong, wrong. <laughs> now listen, I certainly don't know the ins and outs of everyone who does content creation or what they're making. I'm just saying, some of the horror stories I've heard. I'm like, dude, that is is absolutely not the way to do it. <clears throat> like you're gonna get in trouble. Like, when someone tells me, oh, there's a content creator out there who deliberately tells their viewers, when you're going to send me tips, send it to me under the friends and family PayPal thing, so that way it doesn't look like a business transaction. All right? What? (laughs) What? Uh, no. (laughs) That's bad. Now, of course, it all depends on why they're telling you to do that. If I remember a long time ago, if you did that, like, you could avoid fees, transactional fees on PayPal. If you said, oh, it's friends and family transaction, as opposed to, oh, this is a business transaction. I think if you do business transaction, they actually charge you fees. And if you did friends and family, it would be, like, fee-free, right? I think that's what it was a long time ago. All right? So if that's the case, you know, hey... I don't know. That's that's probably between you and PayPal to figure it out. But if anyone's doing that and then they're like, oh, yeah, and under under the American tax code, you can accept up to, to $12,000 a year. I don't know if this is correct. I'm just pulling it out of my ass. But 
You could accept up to $12,000 a year as gifts from friends and family, and that's not taxable income. And then they're saying that actual contributions that come in via their streams is non-taxable income. That's a crime. That's tax evasion. That's bad. That's very bad. That's you willingly know you're doing something wrong. Willingly. It's, well, it's There's a difference. Here's the other thing. I, I think I talked about this the other day. When it comes to taxes, there's a difference between you actually didn't know you were doing something wrong. You thought you were actually doing it correct. Or you willingly knew you were doing it wrong and still did it wrong to try to save money and or lie about your taxes. If you just did your taxes wrong and you could show, oh, well, here was my justification. I really thought I was doing it correctly. Likely the, the IRS is going to say, okay, all right, we get it. it. You screwed up. Let's fix it. And then they'll work with you. It'll suck because you'll probably have to pay a ton of back taxes and fees, but usually they'll work with you. But if you t are actively trying to dodge paying taxes by hiding income, not reporting income, or you know doing things you know are wrong, as in, oh, I'm actively telling you to, to, to send me a tip one way so I don't pay taxes on it, you, that's, that is actually felony tax evasion. That is a major crime you will go to jail for. So, yikes. Again, again, I can only imagine. That's the tip of the iceberg when it comes to, like, the tax code in the United States and how people pay their taxes. That's why this time of year, I'm sure, is incredibly stressful for quite a lot of people, including me. It's a pain in the butt. I hate putting time into this, but you got to do it. Okay? You just got to. You got to do the right thing. Um... Anyway, I digress. That's basically what I'm kind of going through right now. That's it sucks to have my day off. I had to work on this, but it is what it is. I'll have more of this I'm working on this coming week. The good news is all the income calculations are done. Now I just got to do things like expenses and, uh, you know, things that are allowed to be written off based on my monthly expenses. Like, what did I pay for internet every month? What did I pay for this? What did I pay for that? I got to figure all that out because I didn't even look at that. You know, my in the last year, I had to renegotiate all my internet bill contracts and everything with the internet company because all the contracts expired. So I know for a fact the cost of internet went up. Um, you know, a lot of things happened last year, PS5 and everything. Yeah. I got to go through all this crap. So, hooey. It is, it is what it is. I'll get through it. This next week will be, be more annoying behind the scenes than anything else, but I'll get through it. So that's what's going on with me. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I am an independent content creator. I do not have any partnerships with anyone to exclusively stream anywhere and get paid a flat rate. I do not have any sponsorship contracts with any company to show their product. I am a true independent person who, on a daily basis when I stream, I tell you the truth about the games I'm playing. I'm honest with the things I'm saying. When you watch me on a stream, it's not a paid advertisement stream. I'm not pulling any punches i'm not under a non-disclosure agreement to not be able to tell you the full my full thoughts on something um and people tell me that's really the reason why i've had the longevity that i've had is because i've stuck it stuck in there with it and i never became one of these people who was so reliant on sponsorships and income from the outside all right and i love that i love that every day we can enjoy games together i can be honest with you guys we have a great time together this is the best job i've ever had and i'm so grateful that i'm able to do it why am I able to do it? You. You. Because you guys crowdfund my efforts to keep doing this. Right? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here anymore. Alright? It's because of you guys supporting the streams that I'm able to do what I love for a living. To put out honest content for you. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm here and that's why I have the longevity that I have. And I say thank you wholeheartedly for you guys supporting me and allowing me to do what I love for a living. I know how lucky I am. I know that during this pandemic of the last year... The fact that I was doing what I was doing was incredibly lucky because a lot of people ended up being in very bad times and I was the opposite for me. You know, so many people wanted to check out my streams and told me, hey, Phil, you know, your streams are uh, kind of a, a light because they're consistent. You you put out consistently good content on a daily basis and it allows us to have something to look forward to in a world where everything else is kind of uncertain these days, right? So... Number one, you're welcome. Thank you for telling me those nice that nice kind of feedback. And number two, let's keep it going, right? Now, a few things. How do you support the streams? Well, you can cheer with bits. You can subscribe to the channel. You could gift a subscription to somebody. Or you can tip me, all right? Normally, I wouldn't care how you contribute because all those things help me 
and you know I really appreciate all of them but as I've already explained on this pre-stream in the short term I really need your help with tips because I need to get through this week I have two large bills to pay and I want to be able to afford Mario for Friday so I would ask if you are going to contribute at this time please tip me all right if you can forego cheering and subbing to tip me if you have to please do I really need the support right now and I hope that you guys would tip me in the short term so I can get through this week all right, next week, things will get back to normal, but please tip me if you can this week, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, one thing I want you guys to know up front, all right? Contributions are not mandatory. Contributions are not expected. I consider it going above and beyond being a standard stream viewer for you to contribute to my streams, all right? Do I need help right now? Absolutely. But should you feel bad if you cannot contribute? No, you shouldn't. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. If you can't contribute, you can't contribute. I'm not asking for that. I don't want anyone to go above and beyond their own means to try to contribute to the stream. I want you to do what's best for you. If you can contribute right now, absolutely, please do. I need the help, but don't go crazy, all right? Please understand that, that you know, this is all us being successful together. I'm happy for the success of my viewers. I don't want anyone going crazy here trying to contribute if they can't afford it, all right? And again, you know... It's not expected that anyone has to contribute on a stream. My streams are free. They always will be free on Twitch. That's the point. The whole point of this is that we hang out, we play games, we have fun, we have good interactions, we have a good time. That's the point. That's the reason why I started doing this 12 years ago. I never intended to make a dollar doing it. I did this for two and a half years on YouTube before I ever monetized the video, you know. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's not about making a paycheck. It's great that this is my job and I get to do what I love for a living, but that's not why I started, and that's not why, why I keep doing it, okay? All right. Now, a few things. Number one, if you are a longtime viewer, or regular viewer, I should say, excuse me, and if you're considering possibly contributing today, there's a few tips I can give you because I want you guys to be protected on the Internet. And the first is, please, 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 do not use a name here on Twitch that's the same as a name that you use other places. Don't use your real name on Twitch. Do not use a name that you use on your social media accounts like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Use something on Twitch that's completely different that cannot be associated with you anywhere else. Why? Sadly, there's people who will harass you for no reason. Oh my God, I recognize that name from Phil's stream. Let me go harass that person on the internet. I know that sounds stupid, because it is. I mean, you gotta be a real no life, you know, mentally challenged idiot to be hunting down people you don't know on the internet to try to, to troll them. But these people do, because they have no lives, they're losers. So, do what you can to protect yourself, disassociate <clears throat> your, uh, disassociate yourself from everything else on the internet, that way people can't hunt you down and try to troll you. Alright, that's number one. Number two, I strongly recommend you turn off direct messages here on Twitch. You don't need direct messages to be open. When you have that, it just leads yourself to a lot of open trolling. People are going to direct message you with nasty stuff. I have my direct messages set up so that only people on my friends list can send them, and I recommend you do that as well. Okay? Now, one other thing. As I mentioned many times already on this pre-stream, I really need help with tips. I need to hit the tips goals today, tonight, tomorrow, in order to make ends meet this week. All right? If you are going to tip me, please consider making a verified PayPal account. What this means is that you have a PayPal account that is linked to your real-life identity, whether it's through your name, address, and bank account, or whether it's you put in other identification information to have them verify who you are. The reason that this is important is twofold. First of all, in the last four to five months, I received hundreds of fake tips from someone who was buying stolen credit cards off the internet and then sending me tips with them, impersonating other regular stream viewers, so I thought that they were legit. Come to find out... This all came back to bite me when I started getting tons of chargebacks. All that money was not only getting taken back from me, but also I was getting hit with fees and all kinds of crap that was permanently damaging my PayPal account, okay? <clears throat> there were days in the fall when it looked like I made hundreds of dollars in tips and I actually lost money. There was a good two to three week span where my PayPal account was negative. Negative because of this, okay? <clears throat> so all that being said, I have since instituted changes to make it so that this kind of abuse cannot continue to happen. However, the best way to protect myself and also to protect yourself is to create that verified PayPal account. When it's verified, that means if anyone tries to commit fraud, you're now legally liable for it because you've linked your real-life identity to it. 
I know when a tip comes in from a verified account, no one's trying to mess with me and screw with myself or my business because no one's going to want to actually get prosecuted for fraud. See what I'm saying? So thank you to those who in the last three plus weeks have actually gone ahead and made verified PayPal accounts because of you guys. Now it's getting easier to trust tips that are coming in. And, you know, there's, as I say, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It looks like maybe, you know, soon I won't have to be verifying every tip that comes in anymore. And instead, it'll be more relaxed environment, kind of like what we used to have. And I can trust his trips that come in. Okay. So thank you for that. Now, in addition to that, one of the other awesome things about getting a verified PayPal account. It's not even related to my streaming or anything. It helps you in the long term because when you have a verified PayPal account, if you're going to use it for anything in the future, like sending a payment, buying something on eBay or another business, you get what's called buyer and seller protection. What that means is that if someone actually tries to screw you over, like let's say you buy something on eBay and then they send you an empty box and they laugh at you. Ha ha ha, I screwed you. You get your money back because you have buyer or seller protection because you registered your account. <clears throat> Excuse me, because you verified your account. So it just makes sense to do it. It's a free thing you can do. And by doing it, you, you are helping me out to make my streams more streamlined, less bullshit having to break the immersion of the stream to verify a tip, but you also get something out of it too, all right? So thank you in advance to anyone who goes the extra mile and verifies their PayPal account, <clears throat> all right, to help me out. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to get to the segment where usually I would talk about news, but there's so much going on in news, I don't even know what you guys want to talk about. One thing I would like to talk about before we actually get to official news stories. The other day... Someone had actually told me that a bunch of videos had gone up on the internet about Super Mario uh, World over in Universal Studios Japan, like the theme park, okay? <clears throat> and they asked me, what I was, gonna, was I going to watch those with my wife or not? And I was like, yeah, I might. So then, surprisingly enough, one day I finished streaming and my wife says, hey, I found all these videos about people walking through the, you know, the park and, and documenting it. Will you check it out? So we did. We sat down and we looked at those videos. And admittedly, the park looks pretty sweet. And the one thing they won't let you see is they won't let you see the rides. I think there's there's at least one. There's a Mario Kart ride. I think there's a Yoshi ride. I think there's two different rides um, that you can go on. And they're not going to let you record on those. Those are the major things that you do there that are the attractions. And, of course, they're definitely not going to let you film those. That would be like going to Universal Studios and filming all the rides and then putting them on the internet. And why do you even, why do you need to go there, right? So, <clears throat> no, I didn't see that. But outside of that, there's a lot of like showing how, what it looks like walking around. There's a lot of stuff showing like the gift shops and stuff that they have in there. You know, the characters dressed up, walking around, interacting with the people. One of the neat things about the park is that you can. Um, you can get a band that you put on your arm and then you sync that band with the, the, the Mario World app. And as you walk through the park, you earn all kinds of stuff. You earn coins for doing things. There's these little hidden things in the park that you can interact with the band that'll light up or make noise. Like there's coin blocks that'll make noise like you're hitting the coin block like Mario. Or there's wall panels that you can put the band up to that interact and scan it. It'll say, oh, you want a power-up. You got the, uh, you know, you got the, the, the leaf power-up from Mario 3 and stuff like that. And I guess what it is, it's kind of like a, it's a competition. As you go through the park, you're trying to rack up your score for all the interactions that you found in the park with this, this interactive band. And then after the, after the fact, you can go into your app and see how you did. You can rank yourself against other people. And I think it unlocks like special digital things in the app and stuff. So, it looks pretty neat in that regard. Um, they also have <clears throat> multiple places you can get food. They have a major, a major, like, restaurant. And it's funny, because did you guys know that Toad is not called Toad in Japan? He's called, like, something with a K. I can't remember exactly what his name is. But it's, like, something cafe. And he's supposed to be, like, the chef there. And, man, the food is interesting, I guess I should say. I don't necessarily know if it's called if I could call it good <laughs> but it certainly looks interesting like they have fire flower spaghetti 
And it's basically just spaghetti and meatballs. Canopio. Yes, that's his name in Japan. Canopio. Who knew that? I never even knew that. And I'm a lifelong fan of Mario. I didn't know that in Japan Toad was called Canopio. But apparently he is. Canopio's Cafe. I don't know what the significance of that name is. So anyway, Fire Flower Spaghetti. It's just spaghetti and meatballs with some extra seasonings and, like, decoration, you know. They've got, um, like, mushroom soup, which is in inside of a one-up mushroom container. It's, like, the bottom is a ceramic bowl that looks like the bottom of the mushroom. And the top is, like, the top of the mushroom. And it's, like, a hat you take off. It's plastic. And you eat the soup out of the ceramic bottom. Uh, there's actually this thing. It was, like, a pizza bowl. Same thing, ceramic bottom. And then they actually bake on a breaded topping that looks like the top of a one-up mushroom. And you eat through the bread into the bowl and they call it what's weird is they call it a pizza bowl but it doesn't look like pizza it looks like it's like like pot pie or something like that <clears throat> they have burgers you know burgers with mario burger with bacon they have a luigi chicken grilled chicken breast sandwich with curry <laughs> so some weird stuff and some interesting drinks too <clears throat> but i mean let's face it it's it's tourism food you know what i mean like when you go to one of these theme parks they're gonna charge you like Twenty, thirty dollars for something that's worth like ten dollars. That's what they do. It's the gimmick. But for me, it's like the atmosphere looks really cool. Like the whole place is decorated like you're living in the Mushroom Kingdom, and they've got like these these uh, video loops playing on the walls of toads doing stuff, which is kind of neat. It's like fake windows, LED stuff. So it looks really cool. Like if you're a fan of Mario, this is like. Oh my god, to actually be at a theme park that's theme Mario. Like, did we ever think in our lifetimes that video games would go from being like a kid's toy in the 1980s and 90s to becoming such big business, big mainstream business, right? That now they're making entire theme parks just based around video games. Did we actually think that would happen? All right? I, I never foresaw that. Not, no, I didn't think that would happen at all. And... You know, this thing is successful. By the way, it's not open to the public right now. Apparently, it's just, like, for very small groups of people. Like, I guess they're calling them season pass exclusive holders. People who've, like, had a season pass for Universal Studios Japan for a long time were let in for exclusive events or whatever. They're not opening it to the public because of COVID, you know. But can you just imagine, like, if video games continue to grow like this and now you're going to have, like, the Sony theme park, the Microsoft theme park, you know what I mean? Like, Blizzard? I could definitely see Blizzard opening a real-life theme park. They could have Diablo. They could have World of Warcraft. They could have Overwatch. You know, different segments of the park. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know, but... Oh, man, I'm stretching. Oh! Oh, I don't know, but, uh... We'll see. That could be pretty neat, I feel. <clears throat> that could be pretty neat. We'll have to see what happens, but good stuff. We were watching it together, and we were both, like, geeking out. We were like, this is amazing. Basically, as I said, I said this already, but this is definitely something I would like to do in my lifetime with my wife is go to this one of these theme parks if we can. I mean, we don't know what the hell's going to happen with COVID at all. I don't know what the hell's going to happen with my finances. Let's be honest here. But I would definitely definitely like to do something like this with my wife at some point <laughs> pretty cool all right um hmm i think that's all i have to talk about now do you guys have any news you want me to cover or talk about this is what I'm, I'm opening it up to you all right because i don't know what else to say to talk about there's so much going on in the news that I don't even know what to cover. Let's see what you guys want to talk about. Call of Duty drama? There's Call of Duty drama right now? I wasn't even aware of that. Oh, okay. We should talk about this. Cyberpunk, yes. CD Projekt Red got hacked. This is horrible, alright? Some motherfuckers, some ha hacker pieces of shit contacted CD Projekt Red and said, We hacked your ass. We have stolen access to all of your servers. We've locked them out. 
Now, we know that you probably have redundant backups to all of your data, and you'll probably just use those, but we have access to all of internal communications and all this stuff that if we made it public, it would make you look even worse than you already look for the cyberpunk debacle. So you better pay us big bucks right now or else we're going to expose all of your dirty little secrets to the world. Okay? This is fucked up. All right? And... Yeah, it's hilarious. Anonymous says, the ransom note they sent had bad typos in it. It did. It actually was pretty bad. It, it looked like, you know, a teenager, or even worse, like a, maybe like a 12-year-old a wrote it. Anyway, um, so, th so this news comes out, and CD Projekt Red is having none of it. They're like, look, even if they have internal data, internal communications or whatever, even if this is the case, all right, we're not going to give in to the demands of these assholes. We're going to tell them fuck off, and we're not doing it. We're going to contact the authorities, and we already have our data backed up. It is what it is. Look, we're being screwed over, but we're not going to give in to these guys. And I got to applaud that. Absolutely, I got to applaud that. They should not be giving in to anything that these fuckers do. You can't let a criminal dictate what you do in your life. You just can't. That's t It's basically terrorism. It's extortion. It's terrorism. It's terrible. You can't do that. Um, even if this hurts the company even further as badly as they've been hurt by the whole cyberpunk debacle um i think they're doing the right thing and immediately going public and saying this is what's happening with us we're being screwed over by these these crazy fuckers um was the right thing to do so people know what's going on um and i feel awful about it you know there's a difference and here's the thing because some people are so dumb they don't understand this there's a major difference between saying man that company really is tanking and let's face it if everything we're hearing is true about the management they deserve it because the management's awful and they basically destroyed the company with greed. That versus, oh, the company is actually being hacked by criminals who are stealing their data and locking their data and extorting them for money. No, you don't support that. It doesn't matter if you don't like the company. It doesn't matter if you don't like the management. It doesn't matter if you don't like the games like Cyberpunk. You don't support criminal activity ever. There's no excuse for this kind of stuff um, at all. Blackmail and extortion should not be supported just because, in particular, you don't like a company. You're, that's, that's ridiculous. And some idiot on fucking Twitter actually had the fucking audacity to say that to me. Oh, you're probably happy this is happening because of the way that you slam CD Projekt Red. You're probably happy. Like, no, fuckhead. No, you stupid fucking mouth-drooling moron. I don't support crime. You fucking idiot. It's the most dumb thing you could possibly say. The worst take I've ever heard. Are you an asshole? Yes, you are an asshole. To say fucked up stuff like that. I mean, are you, are you serious now? You actually think because they fucked up a game. And I said it was the most disappointing game I've ever played because it was such a fucked up game. I want them to now be blackmailed into oblivion? You're a fucking idiot. And again, this is a moron who thinks that everything in the world is black and white. Because I don't like one thing with the company. I don't like that the management mismanaged Cyberpunk, lied to us about it, and then released an unfinished, broken, buggy, disappointing mess. I now think that they like a meteor should come down and smash the studio and turn them into pancakes. No! No, you fucking idiot. No. If anything, I'd like to see a redemption story. I'd like to see CD Projekt Red actually turn this whole fucking thing around somehow in the long term. That would be infinitely more interesting to me than horrible things happening to the company. God, people are stupid. So, anyway, it's terrible. I, I wish them the best. I hope that this doesn't even set them back even fucking further, right? You know, even further, even worse. I hope not, man. I hope that they can, they can, you know, fix all this and there was no irrevocable damage. You know what I mean? Like, I hope that everything can be fixed. I hope this isn't like, you know, <clears throat> so many awful things that can happen. So... Okay. Uh, all right, anything else you guys want to bring up? Anything else you want me to talk about before we get to shout-outs? I don't really particularly remember the game news, so... <laughs> no. Oh, Sonic 2 movie? That's right, They're, they did announce there's going to be a sequel to Sonic... No surprise here, considering Sonic was one of the biggest movies of last year, and it snuck in right before the pandemic, so people actually went to see it in theaters, and then all the theaters shut down. So yeah, they're making a sequel with Tails is going to be in it. Not a surprise. 
I didn't see the original movie, so I don't. I can't comment on it. <clears throat> don't put glue in your. Hair. That's correct. Do not put gorilla glue in your hair. You will probably hurt yourself. But then again, that's like saying you know, don't shove a, sh- a sword up your asshole. You know, don't run your head through a plate glass window casually for fun. You know, it's, it's common sense. A lot of people don't have it. <clears throat> <laughs> oh my god. All right, anything else? Doesn't seem like it. Oh my god, yeah, I saw a story about this too. Expand Dong says, people who are Pokemon card collectors are going to McDonald's, because in right now in the United States, McDonald's has a special Happy Meal, okay? And in the Happy Meal, they're including a 25th anniversary edition Pokemon anniversary card. You know, 25 years of Pokemon, 25 years of the Pokemon card game and all of that. And I guess these cards are exclusive to the Happy Meals. I don't know if there's one or more than one. But they're actually like going to McDonald's and buying dozens and dozens of Happy Meals at once just to get the Pokemon cards. Thinking that these cards are going to like go up in value uh, and somehow they're going to make money doing it or something. This reminds me, in the 1990s, okay? In the 1990s, at the height of the popularity of Lion King movie. Remember the Lion King when it was actually an animated movie and not CGI. So, you know, I was a huge fan of it. And Burger King had their own kids meal. I forget what it was called. Burger King Kids Club or something like that. Kids Club meal. And they had the Lion King toys. That was a tie-in with that. And I kid you not, adults, not children, adults would go to Burger King and line up and order like 10 of these meals to get the toys because they thought that they were going to have collectible value and they were going to be able to resell them for tons of money. This is not a joke. This actually fucking happened because I was part of, like, I, I was a kid. I wanted the toys. So maybe, like, you know, every once in a while, every two weeks or so, my parents and I would go to Burger King, get the kids' meal. Oh, sorry, we're all out of the toys. What do you mean? Lion King is only, like, a month old. Oh, well, you know, we had an influx of, of fucking 40-year-old guys who came in here and they bought up all the kids' meals, so we don't have the toys anymore. What? I'm not kidding. This is... What is wrong with these fucking people? (laughs) And then the problem... Then they... Eventually they did restock. But they would always restock the same one. I think I had like a hundred Pumbas. I couldn't get anything else. They they didn't have any other toys. It was just always Pumba over and over. (laughs) So... (laughs) This is the problem with people. Consumerism and idiots who actually think that these things have value... Oh, yeah, we're going to go... Just think about this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's think about this. How many McDonald's are there on the on the planet? All right? And they're all offering a Pokemon Happy Meal. They're all offering this Pokemon ex- exclusive card. Right? Think about this. <laughs> How many of these cards must exist on Earth? Okay? Let's buy up all the Happy Meals to get... Like, what? That card's not going to be worth shit. <laughs> You're an idiot. Anyway, enough of this. <laughs> enough of this nonsense. All right. Um. Anything else, guys? Oh, there's only 38,695 McDonald's in the world. And I'm sure they're each going to sell probably... They probably each got like a 1,000 of these cards. So let's do the math. <laughs> okay, then. Anything else? Any other news? Or should I get the shout-outs? We could talk about Turtles, Turtle Dude. I don't know what we would talk about Turtle stuff. Can I sneak diss another streamer? Oh, man. I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. I see so you're talking about Call of Duty drama. What Call of Duty drama? I didn't even know there is Call of Duty drama right now. What drama? I'm not aware of that. 
All right, let's just do shout outs. It's already getting late. Let's just get to shout outs. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. What's going on? My button's not working. You can hear me pressing it very repeatedly and heatedly. Nothing's moving. Come on. Come on. Okay, it's, wor it's working now. <laughs> I'm freaking out. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, Golden Colts resubscribed for 45 months overnight. Thank you, Golden Colts, for that. And just so you know, I, I can't give details because these are two people who actually wanted to remain anonymous. There were two people who actually did send me uh, tips during my day off to try to help with this week's situation. But they did prefer to remain anonymous. Uh, they wanted the support and basically said they had not made it to Monday's streams uh, to help out. But they wanted to help out kind of behind the scenes. So I did receive two anonymous tips <clears throat> behind the scenes. And I do want to say thank you to those people despite the fact that they requested not to have their identities given or anything like that. I just want to say thank you for that behind the scenes. That is very much appreciated. Okay? All right. Now we can get the people who contributed during today's stream. We start off with Turtle Dude, who resubscribed for six months. And says, thanks for all the chill streams. Always a fun time. You're welcome, Turtle Dude. Wasteland Raider 1994 resubscribed for seven months. Thank you to Wasteland Raider for seven month resub. I appreciate that. Uh, Tarantula MS 2018 got the tipping started today with a $5 tip. So let's get that up on the leaderboard. And again, thank you, Tarantula. Not only for the support, but also for the tip because I really need help with the tips right now. That's what we're looking at. We're trying to hit both tips goals today. And I hope we could do it. That would be outstanding. You know, this is day two of three of us getting through this. And then uh, then we're clear sailing. So, thank you, Tarantula. And he says, hey, Phil. What's going on, Tarantula? Good to see you. Uh, total score and cheers. If you're going to open a game studio, will you name it CD Projekt 7? Actually, yes. Uh, uh, oh, my God. That was disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. That was absolutely disgusting. Exploded out of my, my uh, esophagus. I did not expect it. Uh, this morning for breakfast, I had a bagel, a plain bagel with some coffee. That's what my breakfast was. So I'm full of gas. Thank you for... Thank you. Total score for the cheer. Now, what did he say? I don't know because I burped and I forgot. Oh, is it what I named a game studio CD Projekt 7? Yes. That is what I would call it. Snow Curl Cheer, he says, what are your... And cat's plans. Oh wait a minute! I didn't. I forgot to put total score on the leaderboard. Oops. Let's get him up on the leaderboard. That's my fault. Oops! I clicked the wrong thing now. What's going on here? Total score. And it's fifty bits. Fifty bits. Very nice. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh. Snow Carl Cheers said, what are our plans for Valentine's Day? We don't have any because Valentine's Day is this Sunday and both of us have to work. Plus, you know, with everything screwed up in the world with the pandemic and everything, like, all right, well, let me let me give you some perspective. Before the pandemic, what we would do for Valentine's Day is whether we could actually go out on Valentine's Day or not, Kat and I would usually make a reservation at a decent restaurant. I mean, one year we actually did, um, one year we actually did uh, a nice Italian local restaurant here. One of the very few, because there's very few Italian restaurants that are good out here on the West Coast. But there's one that's pretty decent. We made a reservation, and we went there, and we had a nice dinner together. And one year, I actually got her flowers, which was nice. You know, these things that, that you do. But last year, everything was falling apart. And now this year, because COVID, you know. So we're, we're really doing nothing. It sucks. We'd like to. But so, like so you can ask the same question. What are we going to do for our wedding anniversary come April? Uh, who even knows what's going to happen between now and April, you know? What I would say is maybe for that we can plan ahead a bit. Because the thing is for this, like, we had no idea restaurants were going to open on, on February 1st. So there's really no planning and no way to prepare for it. Maybe for our wedding anniversary, at least, we can maybe make a reservation somewhere nice and go have a dinner somewhere. We'll see. But we are doing nothing. It sucks. We'd like to do something, but what can you do, right? <clears throat> okay. List Perk just cheers. Are you going to do something with Mass Effect Legendary Edition? Yes. In May, I'll be playing Mass Effect 1 again, Legendary Edition. It'll be really cool because Mass Effect 1 is a really great game, but man, was it kind of rough around the edges when you look at it today in a modern setting. The frame rate tanks repeatedly. The game has a bunch of bugs and stuff. So I'm very excited to see how it's going to perform on PlayStation 5. Um, so I'll be doing a playthrough of that, and then I don't know if it'll be immediate or sometime later in the year, but I'm going to be playing Mass Effect 3 again. Because last year I replayed Mass Effect 2. 
So I'll be now doing one and three again. <clears throat> um, what the fuck? Anyway, Snow Carl just sheared. He says your explanation of taxes has confused me. Are you actually an employee of Amazon or Twitch? Because they send you pay stubs. I thought you were freelancing. No, 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 no. They don't send me pay stubs. They the way it works is, I am considered an independent contractor. Because I am part of the partnership program with Twitch, there are ways to earn revenue via my streams, you know? And what happens is, they are supposed to, on a yearly basis, send me a tax document. I think it's called like a mis miscellaneous do income document or something like that to show how much I actually made on the site. And it's completely wrong. It's 100% incorrect. It's way under what I made. Because I'm not stupid, I report the correct income that I actually made. Why they send me this miscellaneous tax document that's so under so under underestimated, I have no idea. But I do the right thing. So. Alright, Lysifer sold at 100 bit cheer. And he says, the, t the stream title says I'm heading into Athena's Grove. Does that mean what, what I think it means? Well, if it, you think it means we're heading into the fourth of five areas of the game. And we're going to explore and check out all the cool new stuff. Yes, that's exactly what it means. But who knows, you know, what it means in your sick, twisted mind. I don't know. Then he cheered again. He said, I wish I had the same birthday as you so I could have the same Zodiac sign and be just like you. Well, too bad. <clears throat> Lysifer, <laughs> Lysifer sold cheered again. He said, you said you want some tips. Well, here's a tip. Babies aren't dishwasher safe. Gee, thanks a lot, Lysifer. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, Lysifer sold actually cheered again. And this time it was 212 bits. So actually I'm going to update that because now he's still the top cheerer. Oh shit. He says, congrats on the first round knockout against LTG. You made him your bitch. No, I did not. And in fact, I did not say anything about LTG on this stream at all. In fact, I never said really anything about LTG. If you remember the other day how this all started was someone just asked me general information about taxes. About how, what would happen if you had someone send you tips via like friends and family or whatever and i was like to my knowledge i think number one that does bypass some kind of fee system on paypal although i don't do it like that i know that when you guys tip me it's considered business income so i just do it the right way and i pay the fees i'm supposed to and i pay the taxes i'm supposed to i wasn't taking i wasn't slamming anyone in fact if anything i was more appalled thinking about geez i wonder if there's people who are actually actively out there doing their taxes wrong to save money when in reality, they're going to end up getting really in trouble for it. Um, if someone then went and lied and said that I was attacking LTG, I never did that. I don't know how he does his fucking taxes. How the fuck would I know? I'm just speaking from my own personal experience with taxes. That's it. So I don't care. I don't care what people told him. I don't care what people say. All right? Who gives a fuck? Not me. That's for sure. Someone named Travi has tipped and basically saying that this is actually someone who got banned the other day. They were fooled and they were... All right. I should actually say something about this because I feel that this, do, this does happen. Um, I do feel like, like... Okay. So this person, his name is Travi. He tipped me a dollar thirty. He says, this is actually Eugene. Can you please tell King Michael in your chat that I'm sorry? Someone was sending me messages the other day impersonating him. And apparently this person impersonating him was saying things and making him think that he was saying things he wasn't. And then he said things he didn't mean because of it. And he's actually sorry for it. Okay? This is what he's telling me. Now, does this is this true or not? I have absolutely no idea. Is this true or not? I don't know. I'll tell you this. Eugene was someone who was banned for a very long time for misbehaving in the chat. Then he asked me in the last week to please unban him. So I did. Within one week, he's banned again. So I think that says something. <laughs> okay? You guys can put two and two together and figure out what that means. All right? But isn't it funny that someone was banned for drama, gets unbanned, and within a week is banned again? Okay? Now, the truth of the matter here is this very well could be true. We sadly have people who try to cause drama with stream chatters. And that's why I try to give you guys warning every pre-stream. I say, hey, protect your identity. Don't don't use your real identity here on Twitch. Close your direct messages. 
I do this on purpose for a reason. I'm not just pulling it out of my ass. I'm not just talking. I don't like to hear myself fucking talk where I just talk about it every day for, for no reason. It's because we actively have people who are sitting here on the streams who are trying to cause problems. And so what maybe what happened was maybe King Michael you know, and Eugene actually did have a little bit of interaction in the chat that was a little bit heated and someone jumped on that opportunity to try to impersonate King Michael and make the situation worse. It very well could have happened. It very well could have. Um, I don't know. I was not part of the situation. All right. So what I would say is, if, you know, if Eugene, if you want to contact the moderator behind the scenes and say, hey, here's what happened. Here's evidence of what happened. And this is a, a mistake. And I didn't, you know, obviously I didn't mean for it to happen. And you want to appeal for an unban, you can. But I really can't keep involving myself. I went the extra mile to unban you myself this last week and look what happened, right? <laughs> So you see what I mean? Like, I can't keep getting involved in this shit. I got streams to put on here. All right, so... I wish you the best, and hopefully the thing gets cleared up. Um, Hate Army General did a 100-bit cheer saying, Have I heard of Omni? Omni is an omnidirectional treadmill that lets players walk and run in 360 degrees inside of a video game and other virtual world. It launches this year at $1,000. <laughs> oh, this just sounds like something that every gamer needs, right? Every gamer needs, everyone's going to be using this constantly, to, you know. <laughs> Hilarious. Anyway, no, I haven't heard of it. Um, and no, I'm not going to get it. Sounds very stupid. Sounds like another luxury item that, you know, 10 people will buy. And uh, it'll never really see any traction. So there you go. <laughs> All right, continuing on. Let's see here. Bleach number nine has tipped me a dollar. He says, why was I banned? I was razzing you. I'm a positive stream regular. I have no idea, Bleach number nine. Why was Bleach number nine banned? Who banned Bleach number nine and what happened? What, did he pull down his pants and expose himself to the stream chat again? We can't have that. If that's the case, come on, man. What's going on? Why, how, why did he get banned? Let's hear it. What did he do now? <clears throat> What did he say? What did he do? What drama did he cause? He's not banned. Someone said he's not banned. Well, then what's he talking about? He mocked me for maxing 13 credit cards. Well, that's fucked up. Why would he do that? Why would you make fun of me for maxing out 13 credit cards? It sounds pretty stupid that you would do that, doesn't it? It certainly does. <laughs> so that's probably what happened, Bleach. There's your answer. Uh, I hope that's sufficient for you. I don't know why you would do that. Perhaps you should contact the moderator who banned you and say, Oh, man, I'm an idiot. I will never do that again. That was incredibly stupid for me to do. I can't believe I'm so dumb. Man, I really want to be a part of this stream, and I'm sorry for trying to be negative. And then maybe you'll get unbanned. Maybe. I don't know. Right? <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's continue. It looks like I got a tip, but I want I don't I'm not hundred percent familiar with the name. I want to double check this. Let's take a look at this. Excuse me, that's absolutely disgusting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I received a $5 tip from the 500K. It is a verified tip, and therefore I count it. Thank you very much to the 500K. We're all up to $11 in tips today. Thank you very much. Uh, that anonymous cheer says, COVID droplet spread when your mouth forcefully pushes air out like singing or yelling. Based on that, could your burps categorize you as a super spreader? I mean, it could, except for two things. Number one... When I'm out and about, outside of my house, I'm not constantly eating and drinking, causing gas and burps. Number two, I'm masked up. So, no, I think I have enough protections in place that I'm not super spreading. Plus, by the way, I don't have COVID, so I can't spread it. <laughs> Thank God. Knock on wood. I don't have it. Thank God. Okay. Ali10 resubscribed for five months in a row and says it sucks. Throughout the year of 2020, Twitch screwed you. Multiple times with false copyright strikes and false tax documents. All right. They didn't screw me with false tax documents. I will admittedly say, yeah, their DMCA takedown system's bullshit. 
Remember when they took me down for a game I wasn't playing? <clears throat> I was playing Crash Bandicoot 4, the, the final released retail version, and they took me down for a false DMCA claim saying I was t playing the beta, when I wasn't. No one actually even verified what game I was playing before they issued a false takedown request. That's pretty fucking bad. So, hopefully they get better. Brownie Crab and Shits Cheers says, Does it get tired of having to mediate your chat and fights that occur in your chat like a teacher or fatherly figure? Yes. Admittedly, yes. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to stream a game, to have fun and talk with you guys, and you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to try to fucking be a hall monitor, breaking up fights in the hallway and people picking on each other and shit. It's so dumb. It's such immature nonsense, and the fact that I have to put up with this shit is pretty ridiculous. But... When you have a free and open stream like I do and anyone can attend, that means that anyone could pretty much, you know, cause drama for others. And it's kind of, it goes hand in hand with it. There's not much you can really do about it. You know what I mean? Dead Anonymous Cheers, can we see you masked up? No, because being masked up is not a laughing matter. It's not something to be taken lightly. Um, and it's not something that I'm going to put, oh, look, here's my mask. I'm going to mask up on stream. No, it's not funny. And I'm not doing it. Absolutely not. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen. My nose itches, so let me itch it quickly. Quick shout-outs here. I want to shout-out the top cheers of the week. And I also want to shout-out those who have gifted subs this week. And then we're going to take a brief break. And I'm going to use the restroom. And then we're going to get right into Immortals Phoenix Rising. I'm excited to check out the new area. Have a chill, interactive stream with you guys. And hopefully we hit the tip skull. Just being honest. Hopefully we hit it. And we can keep the positivity going for the week. Because so far, it's been great. Okay. Shout out to the top cheers of the week. We've got Jacket Thug in ninth or 10th place. Big Bad Buffoon in 9th. Kate is in 8th. Westside Rascal is in 7th and tied with someone else whose name is blank, which means either they deleted their account or it's suspended on Twitch. I don't know which. I don't know who this is. In 5th place, we got Snow Carl. 4th place is Ninstar Rune. 3rd place is Akojo25. 2nd place, Lice for Soul. And in 1st place, Westside Phil. Thank you guys for the cheers this week. Then, sub gifts of this week. Thank you to the following people. Low Carb Madman 672 Dark Estes, and Elon Just, who each gifted a single subscription to the channel. And then we got Westside Phil, who gifted five subs to the channel this week. All right, guys. That's about it. Everyone, let's take a few minutes break. Hope that you will uh, do the same. Take a drink or a snack. Use the restroom. Uh-oh. Did my laptop just completely freeze? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. I think it did. What the fuck? Whoa. Whoa. That is that was screwed up. Hold on a second here. Yeah, that was bad. Whoa. Okay. I just unblocked it. I just unlocked it. It was, it was really bad. It locked up for a good 30 seconds. All right. Let's take a break. I recommend that you guys take this opportunity. Grab a drink or a snack. Use the restroom yourselves. Whatever you need to do. And when I come back in a few minutes, it is Immortals Phoenix Rising on the stream. Thank you guys for a fun pre-stream. I'll see you in a few minutes.